I'm Josh Hillman, Director of Education at the Nuffield Foundation. Education has been a central part of the Foundation's work since the 60s. Our research now covers the full lifespan from the earliest years of learning and development, through primary and secondary school, and into the complex web of opportunities and choices in education and training faced by young people and adults. We're interested in people's journeys and life chances, and how these depend on their family, social and ethnic background, their gender, where they live, and their continued experience of education. And we're interested in the policies that affect these journeys and how these might be improved or even fundamentally reformed. These include funding, governance and accountability arrangements across the various phases of education, but also admissions policies and curriculum assessment and qualification systems. We're also interested in educational practice, the actual teaching and learning that takes place in early years provision, school classrooms, colleges, workplaces, and even the home. What is effective and what isn't, and how does this vary for different types of learners and teachers? People, policies, and practice, a big agenda. So what are our priorities? We've identified four broad themes in education. These overlap and interplay, so some of our projects address more than one theme, or even all of them. Let me tell you where we hope each might be taken in our future work. First, we are interested in the capabilities that equip young people to thrive in education, life and work in a rapidly changing world. The long list of these capabilities includes language and literacy, numeracy, quantitative data and digital skills. Beyond these lie broad areas like social and emotional development, analytic inquiry, problem solving, creative thinking and collaboration. Our most ambitious of current education project, Skills Imperative 2035, is exploring how essential employment skills and demand for them are likely to change over the next 15 years. This will lead us to ask, what are the implications for the education system? How will the development of these and other capabilities and traits help children beginning their education during this period to flourish in all aspects of their lives ahead? How might the curriculum evolve to meet our aspirations? Do we think hard enough about education as it could be, rather than how it currently is? Second, we fund projects aimed at improving the quality of teaching and learning across the education system, whether by addressing issues relating to the workforce itself or through development and evaluation of interventions and resources. Not only in schools and other providers, but also through support for parental engagement or independent or informal learning. One great example of a highly effective programme is the Nuffield Early Language Intervention, NELI, which supports children with difficulties or delays in spoken language. NELI's development drew on high quality research. It's been trialled and evaluated at increasing scale and is now in two thirds of English primary schools. Looking ahead to our work on the quality of teaching and learning, how can current and emerging digital technologies be best exploited and potential risks and downsides addressed? Third, we are interested in individual and structural influences on young people's pathways, choices and decisions at key points in their progress through education and training. We've built up a strong portfolio on higher education funding, access and outcomes, and we are now balancing this by developing the evidence base for other areas of the post-16 landscape, in particular vocational and technical routes such as apprenticeships and T-levels. Other topics include career guidance, local skill policies, and the role of employers. Finally, we address the various forms of disadvantage and vulnerability faced by children and young people at risk of falling behind in their learning. These include socioeconomic and geographic disadvantage, special educational needs and disabilities, experience of care, and various forms of discrimination. What challenges do these present and how do they impact on each other? Looking ahead, we want to know more about how the full range of factors outside education influence the educational opportunities and outcomes of all children. I'm thinking of their families, housing and neighbourhood, access to technology, their nutrition and sleep, physical and mental health, and neurodiversity. The influence runs in both directions, so many of these factors are themselves swayed by education and running across all of this are the complex interactions between genes and environment. We are blessed with fantastic data to explore these and other big themes in education. 
and with curiosity and expertise from many disciplinary perspectives. There are lessons to be drawn from increasing diversity in the education systems of the four nations of the UK, as well as from overseas. And we have a wealth of teachers with a strong desire for evidence and a willingness to try new approaches.